Hello there. Today we're going to look at finding zeros of polynomials. To find a zero of a polynomial, you can use a calculator, but a calculator won't give you the imaginary zeros. So we're going to look at how to find these zeros algebraically. Before we do that, we have to look at a few theorems. The first theorem we want to look at is called the rational zeros theorem. And what that says, if you have a polynomial a n times a to the n to, times x to the n plus a n minus 1 times x to the n minus 1, all the way to the constant term a naught. So remember, a naught through a n are the coefficients. If those coefficients are integers, and p over q, so p over q is some rational number, like a fraction, some rational number of the function, then p is a factor of the constant term, and q is going to be a factor of the lead term. So what this theorem does is allows us to list possible rational zeros. Remember it says if this is a zero, then this is true. It doesn't tell us that this will be a zero. Okay, so it allows us to find possible uh, zeros of this function. So let's take an example. Here we have a polynomial 2x cubed plus 3x minus 4. And the factors of 2, if we list them out, the lead coefficient factors are plus or minus 1 and plus or minus 2. And the factors of 4 which now is the constant term, so we look at the lead term, constant term, the factors of 4, plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, and plus or minus 4. And so according to the rational zero theorem, we can list out these zeros, these possible zeros of this function, so possible zeros of f of x, of the ratio of the factors of this term to the factors of this term. Okay, so in other words, let's start with 1. So plus or minus 1 over 1 is going to give me plus or minus 1. And then plus or minus 1 over 2 is going to give me plus or minus 1 half. And then plus or minus 2 over 1 is going to be plus or minus 2. And plus or minus 2 over 2 is plus or minus 1, but I already wrote that. Then we've got a 4, plus or minus 4 over, over 1 is going to be plus or minus 4. And then 4 over 2 is going to give me 2, but I already have plus or minus 2 here. So these are my possible zeros for this function. And then it's a matter of plugging in these, these numbers into my function to see which one makes it 0. And if you plug in the, the numbers into the zero, into the function to see what makes it zero, you'll see that one, if I plug in one here, one is the number that makes it zero. In other words, f of one equals zero, just by inspection, just by plugging each of these in. Now, these didn't have to be a zero of the function, but it happens that one of these is a zero. 